Let's battle in Fordia. This is a tactical and strategy game based on the Norwegian Civil War. It plays one to four players. We are reviewing it at two players due to the fact that we are currently in a lockdown. In this review, we are going to be talking about the replayability of the game, but not an actual how to play. There is a great one by Gaming Rules up on BGG that you can go and check out. Um, the production of this game, we are playing a prototype, but that being said, the quality of it has been fantastic yeah. to play with. Um, all the pieces are very usable, mm -hmm. and when we talked with the designers, they said it's going to be a better quality even than the prototype we have. Right now, all of the pieces are uh, chunky plastic and really amazing details on them. So you actually feel like you're building a church or you're building a village. Yeah, it has a nice tactical like feel when you're playing the game. Yeah, and even even the castles are actual, oops, Oop. as I'm throwing cubes, actual <laughs> pieces more. rather than um, just a tile that says a castle. So it's a really cool game that way. And yeah. also, it's a really dynamic board because it's modular 3D. So when you're playing, it's cool. You're mm. actually climbing up levels. It's not just different colors of tiles. You're actually going up elevation. Yeah, and everything you, once you've played the basic game, played the full game, you can set the board how you want, and it's just almost a board draft. I'm gonna rip our beautiful board apart right now, but you also have an A side, you have a B side, and then you have a number of the, these different 3D levels you can create. So as long as you put out the right castles, uh, you, you can basically set the game how you'd like to. We are all about replayability, so let's talk a little bit about where the replayability comes from in this game. Sure. Uh, I think a lot of the replayability comes from the board and the setup. Obviously comes against who you're playing against. So whether you're playing two, three, and four, I can see this being very different depending on what group you're playing. And then it's a game that the more you play it, the better you get. The first couple times, I was not very good at all. And she was just trouncing me all over the board. She was still trouncing me all over the board around game you know, six and seven. But I, I at least was starting to understand it a little more. Uh, there's also a lot of variability just based in the leader card. So you get a leader card at the start of the game and then you can earn them throughout the game and they give you some different powers. Uh, as well, when you battle, you never know what you're going to get. When you go to battle and you want to go over a different spot, you have three battle cards and you have to play one of them. And also that's very variable based on what she's already played in the past because if she leaves them out on the board, I might be able to match a symbol or just what I draw randomly. So there's number of different styles to this game. In addition to the cards, there are alliance tiles that you can collect. So instead of taking a leader card, when you get one of your heirs to one of your owned castles, you can actually take an alliance tile that will score you points at the end of the game. As you're scoring points during the game, you can pass over tokens that give you event cards. These event cards are random every game so you never know what event is coming up next yeah i find the events kind of move the game along because as you're going you're going to be chopping down trees and building villages or establishing churches but some event cards will allow you to put the trees back on the board and they will allow you to put extra errors in that you may have already shipped off it kind of just kind of keeps the game churning along yeah and i think the other thing that's a really interesting mechanic in this game is the fact that you have to pay money to keep additional cards in play. So you are building up your tableau of cards and you can use powers from previously pay played cards. Yeah. Um, but if you wanna put that third card down, it's gonna cost you a dollar. If you wanna put down a fourth card, it's gonna cost you $2. So you can have more powerful tones, mm -hmm. but it's gonna cost you. Yeah, I find it, the game scales well. Because at the start of the game, you start the game with $2, and you don't have a lot of money in the first you know, handful of turns. But then as the game keeps going along, and you're either establishing or, or potentially burning churches, you're getting more money. And you're also getting more money from villages, which allows you in turn to play some more cards, because now you can afford to leave your cards on the table. Absolutely. And with that said, the other areas that kind of allow you to <clears throat> build up some points... Oh, some of the different location actions 
So while you're playing, there's different phases, there's movement, you can battle, mm. and depending on what you're doing, is it's going to change the game and it's going to change the things you can do at the end. One thing that I found mm. challenging, we'll Challenge. say, Me? Um, no. well, it's due to him, okay. is the fact that he wanted, every time I got a new, um, le I can't say it, le legdo. I'm not even going to try to. Anyways, I apologize. And we, every, <laughs> you get one of these guys. Every time I got another guy and I thought I could do something fantastic, Matthias would come in and interrupt my plans by taking me to battle, and I would lose one. Um, and there's other actions that make you lose them as you go. So it's really a matter of managing multiple things. There's a supply route that you are trying to manage, and you can establish something fabulous, and your opponent can take it out the next turn. Well, it's a war game. So you're, you're, like, you're going to have your supply lines. You want to keep those. Uh, you don't have to necessarily battle in this game, but I guess towards the end of the game you do. You don't have to at the start, but I think it kind of behooves you to battle, particularly in a two-player game because you start on opposite sides of the board. So, you know, I found the first couple early games, Lisa was just kind of doing her own thing, and I was doing my own thing, and I was letting her do that. <laughs> but then, you know, as we kept playing the game, I would just start going after her. So while I would like take out your, your guys, you can bring them back fairly easily. So you're just kind of going back and forth with that throughout the game, which makes sense from a thematic standpoint. I guess the one thing we didn't touch on is that the rule book's very well done. So I was very pleased with the rule book. I was also pleased with the, uh, I forget the name of the video we watched. The Oh, Gaming Rules playthrough, gaming rules. as well as the company has a playthrough as well. Yeah, but one thing that they do in this, and I love when, when war game companies primarily do this, or other companies do it, is they give you some historical facts of, of who the leaders are in the game. So it adds that extra little bit of flavor. So then once you're playing the game, you kind of get a little bit more into the theme and what you're trying to do from a thematic sense. The other thing that we didn't touch on is they gave us in the prototype copy these really cool loan to play strategy cards. Um, they haven't said whether or not they're going to be in the actual game, but they said if not, they'd put them up on BGG and people could print them out themselves. Um, but it's a fabulous get started because when you first play, the challenge we had was we didn't really know 100% what to do without reading that code. Mm -hmm. Because you can move around the board, but if you don't have a plan of attack, you're kind of not doing a lot. Um, so, and I think a big part of that is the fact that we're playing two player, and I think the sweet spot for this game would be a three to four player game for because sure. you have a lot more player in action. And that really enhances the replayability. Yeah, no, I, I still think it plays well at two. It takes a little bit while to just kind of get yourself into it. We didn't play the solo at all. But, yeah, I, I would definitely say that this is going to play better at more, but I still think it's playable at two. Oh, absolutely. We had a great time. The game is very well designed from mechanics mm -hmm. yeah. to flow and theming. And I really enjoyed the element of movement with the elevation and yeah. having to really think out your turns and how you're going to move and what you're moving. Because not only do you not want to leave one of your guys out by himself mm -hmm. because someone can come in and attack them, you do also have to migrate around cliffs and other things that could impede your travel. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I, movement's very important where you go and how you protect your supply line because ultimately one of the big points of this game or area to get points in the games is shipping your errors back uh, you, you basically, from a thematic standpoint, you have heirs that you've married into aristocracy, and then you have to ship them back for victory points, and you get to put them on track for additional victory points. But to do so, you need a supply line, so you also need to protect that as well. Uh, and the other supply line also gives you movement options, so that's a big thing in terms of where you want to leave people and where you want to take them away from. Yeah, so overall, we really enjoyed this game. We can't wait um, to try this game with more players because I think it really will shine at those higher player counts. But we still enjoyed it thoroughly. And for our collection, it's a unique game, unique game style. So I think yeah. it's going to find a home within our war game shelf. Yeah, I would, one thing I would add is if you play war games, you will definitely like this. If you haven't played a lot, I think it's probably a good starting place.